Get ready, today we're doing fruit slice signs. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! We're going to start off with two of these little rainbow Dollar Tree signs. I found these in the regular home decor section, so they weren't Valentine's, you could probably still find them. We're going to take off the strings and the tags from the back. Then we're going to fill in the holes and I'm just using some of this spackle that came from the Dollar Tree to go in each one and then I'm just going to use my little scraper tool to make sure it's nice and flat for when we paint. After it dries, I'm going to add some chalk paint. You could probably use acrylic paint here if you wanted to, but I just like that I get the texture from the chalk paint and I know that it is a matte finish and the other paint is going to take well, I think, to the sign now. So I'm going to go over both signs like this, just back and forth, kind of sloppy. I've got this cool, finally, little heat gun, and this one came from Arteza. I'll put the links below for you if you're interested. Love it. It may dry in this paint so much faster. And you know, chalk paint pretty much dries pretty quickly anyway, but this really made these projects go along a lot faster. So the second coat I'm going to put on one of these, I'm going to kind of go, you can see here, I'm going to go at an angle and just follow all the way around. I thought for the texture of a lemon, this would be perfect, just in case it shows up through my paint. You're going to need two different colors of yellow, one darker than the other, and white. I've just got some little wood chips here that are good be our seeds, and I've got some greenery and some ribbon. So we're going to start with the lemon slice. I've just pulled up a picture that looks like a lemon on Pinterest to give me a little bit of inspiration and direction. I'm going to take a pencil and I have sped this up for you, but you do need to see the process, so I went ahead and left it in for you. We're going to start off with the rind of the lemon, so I'm just kind of sketching that in. If you mess up on your lines and what you're drawing, you can use one of those big pink erasers and it'll take it off without smearing it from my experience anyway. So now we're gonna do the little sections here of the lemon. And in between the sections, there is a white area, or maybe it's called pith, I'm not sure. But we're gonna leave the white area there, and these are gonna be the little divisions of the lemon. So you can see here, I've erased and made some mistakes and fixed it, and you know, you can do that too, it's no big deal. I thought it would help me to draw it in before I painted, and I'm very glad that I did now. So I'm just going to take a wide, flat brush and start adding on my lighter yellow. We're going to save the darker yellow to go on the outside. You can get paints at Dollar Tree. You can get paints at Walmart for 50 cents. Um, the Apple Barrel, I think, is around 50 cents. Don't quote me on that, but you know you can get these pretty inexpensively. I'm not sure of the quality of the paint there at Dollar Tree, so just buyer beware. I'm also going to go around the edge of the sign with that yellow just to carry the color over. And just so you can see, this is sped up to four times. So really take your time here and it's going to be worth it. Believe me, it's going to be worth it. And you'll look back at your handiwork and think, wow, I did that. You got to be proud of yourself. This is my first time doing something like this. So I think I'm happy with the results. Um, you can let me know once we get to that point in our end screen and let me know what you think. So I'm gonna continue around. Keep in mind um, that these little sections are kind of rounded on the edges, so they're not a perfect triangle. You don't have to make them perfect triangles. All right, I'm gonna take the more golden yellow and start to put in my rind. You need to dry your paint in between so you don't smear if you bump it with your hand. Make sure everything's dry. And certainly if you don't have a blow dryer or a heat gun to dry with, you can use a fan or you can just leave it, walk away, take a coffee break and come back. So you can see here, I got over my lines. I made kind of a mess. It's kind of smeary. Don't worry, we're gonna fix it. But be sure that the paint is dry first. I cannot tell you enough. It's got to be dry or it will blend the colors. So I'm gonna take a narrow brush here and just go right in between. Now you see how that just brings that right back? It brings that white right back in there. By no means is it perfect, 
but I'm trying my best to cover up my pencil marks because I don't want those in there. If you like that look though, you can certainly take a marker or a Sharpie or something and go back over and put your black lines in. And that would be nice too. And then see on this part, you can see there, this my line is not perfect, but you know, if you look at a lemon, it's not perfect either. Go ahead and just round off the white around the yellow and it will make it look like you did a perfect job painting. Look at that. It almost erases your mistakes. Look how crisp that is with all the white now and the different yellows. I think this looks like a lemon. What do you think? Not bad, huh? So just continue along here and then I'm going to dry. I don't want to bump anything and mess anything up. So these little pieces came in a bag that I got at Goodwill and was just a bunch of little craft scraps and stuff and I thought these would be the perfect look when you cut a lemon you know you cut you cut through the seed and you get that kind of a woody look this is what it looks like to me and look that just adds a little more texture and a little more interest to the lemon you don't have to use this if you don't want you could paint it in or you could just not put anything on there if you'd like but I like lemon in my water, I like lemon in my tea, so I'm kind of familiar with what a lemon looks like. And I think this is pretty good. Okay, so now we're going to deal with this little cutout section in the top. I've got some greenery here. I thought that some little yellow and white flowers would be pretty. These are all scraps from other things that I've used. I've just pulled them off because I like to recycle my things and repurpose them. And I'm just going to start laying them down. You can just see my process. Um, I don't do everything perfectly. I can edit out things, but I want to show you my thought process so that you also can know that you're not going to do everything perfect the first time. Okay, so my stems are short. So what are we going to do here? If I try to attach it in the middle with my zip tie, everything's going to fall out, right? Okay, well, what you can do is use two zip ties. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one on one side, one on the other side, and then leave myself the perfect little space for my bow. No big deal. We can work it out, can't we? You can also use wire if you need to, or, you know, twist ties or pipe cleaners, whatever you got. So I'm going to take seven inch pieces here of a thrifted and a Dollar Tree ribbon, and I'm going to make four of each one. Snippy snip. Nice sharp scissors make so much of a difference. I also get my scissors from Arteza if you want to check that out. All right, now I've got some Dollar Tree ribbon here. This is wired burlap. I'm going to cut it down at the same length. And this is going to be the base. I thought this would really look good considering that we have the little sliced seeds on the lemon. So I thought this would be a nice way to bring in a little more of that earthy color that I love so much. So I'm just going to cut dovetails in those two bigger ones, and I'm not going to cut any anything on the uh, thinner ribbons. You can cut those at a slant. You can dovetail them if you're just really feeling, you know, if you've got some good small scissors and you want to do that, then you just go right ahead and do it. But for me, this was fine. You don't have to do this in any particular order. This is a messy bow. You're just going to crisscross it over on itself, put them back and forth, and then tie them off in the middle. It's a cute little messy bow. I think that the little colors look nice together and they look lemony. I like the yellow and white and the little lace ribbon there. It's got the lace on the top and the silk ribbon underneath. Almost looks like the shape of little lemons, doesn't it? The little cutouts. I think it's cute. You can use any colors that you like, any textures that you like. You can use all burlap if you're just going for that farmhouse look. But I've really been enjoying a more cottagey feminine feel lately so I'm kind of adding those into my home okay so now I've got to do something to attach this on the back I've used some hot glue to go straight down and across on the back just to give me a little something I'm using these clips just to hold it in place until my glue is set up and by the way when you paint those boards they will bow up a little bit because that's not wood it's like a paper but don't be concerned about that. It's just gonna give it a little more dimension and it'll look nice when it's hanging off of your wall or your door. Okay, so fluff it all out the way you like it. 
and I decided I wanted to cover up that little jute in the middle so I'm just gonna wrap another piece of that yellow and white ribbon that I love so much and I'm just gonna tie it in a double knot here it'll make it a little more secure also we've got lots of things going on in the middle of this don't we trim off the extras we want it to look nice and expensive and then you're just going to use the little bars that are in the back, the little cross beams or whatever I have going on there, and just tie the little um, swag to that. And then I wanted to add just a little bit more, as I often do when I make swags. So I'm going to push this up through where it's tied, right there. And I can still see this, so I'm just going to clip it off. These little popsicle sticks will clip very easily. And I'm going to add one more yellow flower right there. What do you think? If you enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. Now, on to the watermelon slice. This one's much easier. So we're going to take some red, and I think this is bright red, but you use whatever color you like. I chose this because it has... Um, it's more of like of a true red, I guess. Uh, it doesn't have any berry tones to it. So it looks like a watermelon to me. The watermelons that are accessible in Alabama where I live. So I'm just gonna go around and do uh, like a big semi-circle of red. This is going to be the meat of the watermelon. Now, if you like yours to be wider than that, certainly go ahead and make it wider than that. I end up with a pretty thick rind, but I don't mind. You just use this as inspiration. All right, now we're gonna take two different color greens here. I have a grass green and a crisp green. I do change up my outer color, um, which you will see shortly. But for now, let's just talk about this inside of the rind. Okay, sometimes when you get a watermelon, it's a whitish pink color. Sometimes it's a yellowish green color. Whatever color is better for you then you put that there. I'm going to show you a tip about your paint and why you need to let it dry first. Look, I went back over it and look what it did. It lifted my paint up. So be sure that you don't overlap. I was trying to get a nice straight line here or a crisp line, but all you have to do to achieve that is to let it dry and then paint one more coat over the top. You don't want to lift your paint. So this paint, you can see this green was not dark enough compared to that lighter green. It was very misleading uh, on the bottle. So I did go back over this. I, I went ahead and finished this coat thinking it might dry darker, but it didn't. And then I let this coat dry and I went back over it with another green. And I'm sorry, I can't remember what color it was, but it was a darker green. And I made that the outside of my rind. Now I'm taking some black and I'm just using a little teardrop shaped brush here and I'm making seeds. We're going to have seeds in our watermelon, but you can have a seedless watermelon if you like. Do this however you want to do it. You can also use a sharpie or a paint marker to draw these in if you would rather do that. I'm not looking for perfection. We wouldn't actually have a watermelon hanging off the door anyway, so you know this is an artistic view here. Take your own license. All right, 18 inches here. We're going to cut down some ribbons. I have thrifted ribbon, which is the two darker ribbons here. The red one, or the two wider ones, excuse me. The red one does not have any wire in it. Neither does this black and white, and neither does the white and black. The only wired one is the plaid that is underneath. So you're gonna cut slants in your thinner ribbons and dovetails in the thicker ribbons. And then I'm just gonna start off by making a very easy bow. You can see this is simple. Then I'm gonna do the same thing here. If you are using a ribbon that does not have wire, you wanna keep your bows reasonably small or else they won't stand up and they get really floppy. Of course, if floppy is your look, then that's fine. Now this is me deciding, do I want the checked in the back or the red in the back? All right, we're gonna do the same process with the other bows making each bow a little bit smaller than the one before it. So our black and white little dots on top are gonna to be the smallest loops. I'm gonna use a pipe cleaner, I mean a zip tie, excuse me, and go around here and zip it off and then clip off the edge 
and then fluff it around. Pull these down how you like them, fix your bows however you like it the best. You know I like to fluff a lot. Alright, so I wanted this watermelon to have some realistic looking leaves. Now watermelon leaves not exactly like this, but I did look it up and the vines are very similar to what we see here. So I decided to break these apart and let's see, do I want three? Nah, we'll do two. And I'm going to make another crossbar on the back because we have a gap. We've got to have something to attach the bow to. So I'm just this time decided to just use it going across once instead of two of them. And I'm going to add the greenery two on this side, two on this side, and then I want to add. There I am fluffing again. I want to add two more here. Because as I said before, my swags often start off with just stuff to the sides and then I end up putting something in the middle. So I went ahead and did it here. And I wrapped a piece of ribbon around the zip tie. And now I'm going to attach it down to the leaves and that little piece of popsicle stick in the back. You can go ahead at this point and trim off anything extra. This is what I love about the ribbons. You can leave them long and then you can decide later how you want them. And then it'll be perfect just the way you like it. I like this. It just screams summertime to me. Let's make a hanger. So I'm gonna cut one pipe cleaner in half. I'm gonna do the same process to both of these little signs. I'm just gonna twist it around here, loop it, twist it around and you hang it from the loop. So here's our watermelon slice. I like my watermelon slice, it's so cute. I think I'm gonna use this to help decorate for a 4th of July when that comes up. Be sure you subscribe if you're into budget-friendly DIYs and crafting. On to the next, and this is our lemon slice, which would be absolutely perfect any time of year. I believe in you. I think you need to hear something positive every single day, and it is true, I do believe in you, and I know that you can do these. If you're enjoying these videos, please give me a big thumbs up. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you again soon. Bye.